That's the top of the world, baby. You can't get anywhere better than this. In the last 10 or 20 years, what are called the hard sciences have uh, started to see the value of local knowledge. But the people who are living out on the land, in the country, surviving off of it every day, are observing it and they, they have knowledge. Uh, the exchange of information between the academic sector and the communities, and often in Alaska we're talking about native communities, the communities understand that the, the university has access to resources, to modeling systems, to fancy instrumentation that can really help provide detailed information about the environment. At the same time, we are not the local observers. We're not able to make those observations about the impactful weather. We have to go to the communities to properly tune how we're running the models. Before all of this stuff started occurring, we would just come out here and go do our hunting without too much uh, worry. Now we have to really worry about the ice conditions out here. You know, the ice doesn't get as thick as it used to five, ten years ago. The ice is melting from beneath with all the warmer currents and also the warmer temperature that we have in the atmosphere. Yeah, just this year alone we had two record-breaking temperatures. At the community levels, they're interested in conducting activities at the local scale, so ranging no more than 10, 20 miles away from where they are. IPCC models are run at the regional scale, and that, that sort of scale is fine if you want to compare North America in 2020 with North America in 2090. But when a town comes to you and says, well, we need to know what the waves are going to be like, at our harbor entrance. But we have to go through a downscaling process. What we're looking for are specific occurrences of weather events that are causing disruption basically to their way of life. If it interferes with their life, I want to know about it. Then I can go back and find out what type of weather system caused that event. And once I know that on the larger scale, then I can use these large scale future climate prediction models and start to answer some of their questions. We have a, a sense of place, so if you bring an expert to talk to our expert, then there are two people who respect whatever they're talking about, whether it's caribou or landscapes or rivers or ocean or the ice. When you get real experts talking to real experts, language and cultural differences start to become less relevant. An academic here at University of Alaska Fairbanks is just as happy to take information from another expert in the office down the hall as they are to take information from a village, recognizing that the people on the land are experts in their own right. It's like two intersecting circles. If you put everything that the Inupiaq people know about the Arctic environment in one circle, you put this Western science, the study of the environment, it's another circle. There's a place where those two circles overlap. And that spot in the middle where the two circles overlap is a real fun place to be. A lot of people do take a lot of pride in what they know here and what they can contribute to science and uh, you'll be real surprised to see how fast that they're wanting to assist when asked.